This is part 15 of Blazor Tutorial. In our previous video, we discussed how to retrieve list of resources, that is list of employees. In this video, we'll discuss how to retrieve a resource by ID, for example, employee by ID. At the moment, when we issue a GET request to this URI slash API slash employees, we get the list of employees. Now, we want to retrieve a specific employee, for example, employee whose ID equals 1. For this, again, we issue a GET request, but the URI this time is this slash API slash employees slash 1. The value 1 is the ID of the employee. Here is our employees controller. At the moment, within this controller, we have just one method, get employees. We implemented this method in our previous video. When we issue a get request to this URI slash API slash employees, this is the method that's going to handle that request. And this returns the complete list of employees. Now we need another method which is going to return employee by ID. So we need a public method. This is also going to be async and it's going to return task of action result of employee. Remember, we want just a single employee. Let's bring in the required namespace and let's name this method get employee. To this method, we want to pass the ID of the employee whose details we want to retrieve as a parameter. Employee ID is of type integer and let's call the parameter ID. Now, when we navigate to this URI slash API slash employees and issue a GET request, we want this method to handle that request and return the list of employees. In the URI, if we have the ID of the employee, and again, if we issue a GET request, we want this method to handle that request. So we want to include an extension to this route right here. So if the URI is slash API slash employees, then this method should handle that request. If we have the ID of the employee in the URI, that is if we have API slash employees slash ID, then we want this method to handle that request. So to specify that, we're going to again decorate this method with HTTP GET attribute and then include an extension to this route API slash employees slash we want the ID of the employee. And to specify that, we are going to include a route template on this HTTP GET attribute. So within curly braces, we specify our ID route parameter. With this route template in place, the employee ID value that we pass in the URI will be automatically mapped to this method parameter. So all that is left right now is to retrieve the respective employee using this ID from the database and return that employee. So let's include a try catch block. Employee repository is already injected into this employees controller using the constructor. So let's use this injected repository and retrieve the respective employee. Notice on employee repository, we have get employee method and to this method, we just pass this incoming employee ID. This get employee method is also an async method. So let's await its execution and store the result in a variable. If this variable result is null, that means we have not found the employee with this provided ID. So first let's check if result is null. If it is null, we have not found the employee with this provided ID. So we want to return the HTTP status code 404 not found. For that, let's use the helper method not found. On the other hand, if we have found the employee, we simply want to return that specific employee. So in this case, ASP.NET Core is going to automatically serialize the employee object to JSON format and write it to the response body. This response body along with the HTTP status code 200 OK is then returned to the client, that is to the caller of our API. Now, 
If there is any exception executing this piece of code to retrieve data from the database, we want to handle that exception, log it to a database table or a file and then return the HTTP status code 500 with this message, error retrieving data from the database. Now on this employee ID route parameter, we can also include a route constraint. Now whatever value we pass in the URI for employee ID, we know it is an integer and we want this value to be mapped to this method parameter ID only if the value data type is integer. If it is of any other data type, we don't want that mapping to happen. We can specify that by including a route constraint. So we include a colon and then the data type, in this case integer. With all these changes in place, let's run our project. There we go. We have both our Blazor Web project and our API project up and running. Keep in mind, at the moment, our Blazor Web project is still using the hard-coded employee data from our employee list component. We'll discuss how to retrieve this employee data by calling this REST API service from our Blazor Web application in our upcoming videos. For now, let's quickly test our REST API service. Notice. When we navigate to slash API slash employees, we see the complete list of employees in the URI. If we include the ID of the employee, then we only see that specific employee details. If we change it to three, then we see that employee details. If we include an ID that does not exist, we get the HTTP status code 404 not found. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.